according to the Bible. We call some African, come on, they call some African American, black, Latino, Negro. Every 20 years is a new term. You've been, you've been around some for long as I have. You've seen the evolution of the of the labels we've been called from Negro to black to colored to African American. So who are we? What's our nationality? Do you know? Our people they don't consider. African American, ma'am, do you know what you know the term African American comes from? African American comes from two men, two white men, Americo Vespucci and Leo Scripius are Africanics, an Italian explorer. So how do we have the name of two white men? How do we have the name of two different white men? We're not African American, we are the Israelites according to the Bible. Yes, right. We are God's chosen people. Keep reading. Verse 45, read that again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and they shall pursue thee. So ma'am, what's your name? I'm sorry, I can't hear you through the mask. I know it's hard. Elise? Denise? Okay, Denise, my name's Kanan. So the Bible says that for, for us breaking God's commandments, curses were going to come upon us. So let me ask you today, are we cursed or are we blessed? As a nation of people, the way that we live, are we at the top or are we at the bottom? The way we live, yes. In society. Are we at the top or are we at the bottom? Come a little closer. I can't I can't hear you from over there. Man, man, man. I, I want you to understand this, Denise. This is the most important information you're gonna hear ever. That's right. If you walk away on this, you walk away on your salvation, man. Cause we're gonna show you what that the Bible was written for you. You're special, Denise. God gave you laws, statutes, and commandments. God chose you. That's why you're in front of us today. Right. God, I'm I'm gonna show you in the Bible that you're God's chosen people. Right. And the reason why we go through the things we go through is because God loves us. Right. God's no. chastening us. That's so you now you have to ask yourself, who are we? I want you to come a little closer, Denise. Just give me five. Just give me five minutes. Five minutes of your time, so I can show you this, ma'am. Listen to me. Come. I want to show you something. All right. All right. Read verse forty-five again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. And shall pursue thee. Why did they come upon us? Because our people didn't want to hear the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. Right, and this yo. is the prime example. Once again, our people didn't want to listen to and observe and do God's commandments. So what happened? Curses came upon us. Right. It's time that we shake that mentality of not wanting to hear each other. Our, the, the, the prophets are before you to show you the truth according to the Bible. Our people, they don't, they don't consider. God said curses were going to come upon us and they were going to overtake us. Read on. And overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Until we were destroyed. Read on. Because thou hearkenest not. It's because we didn't want to hear. Just like Denise didn't want to hear. We tell Denise who she is according to the Bible. We show her God's law, statutes, and commandments. No, but our people don't want to hear. Because we didn't hearken. Read on. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The Bible is the voice of the Lord God. Right. The Bible is where the entire world gets to understand the God. All these religions, Islam, Buddhism, we were the people with the original God. They copied off us. Because we observe the voice of the Lord our God, read. And to keep his commandments. And to keep his commandments. So my brother, do you know who you are according to the Bible? I know who I am. You do? Who are you? I'm an Israelite. You're an Israelite, okay. And how do you know that? I'm the son of Judah. You're from the tribe of Judah. That's correct. Okay. From the tribe of good, Israel. good, good, good. So now that you know, how did you hear about that? Uh, through my research. Okay. And how long have you known about it? Mm, about, about eight years. Eight years? You know, you know that you're in like eight years? Oh, no, yes, sir. Okay. So what are you doing out here today? Uh, going to the store. Going to the store? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you, do you know that God gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to keep? Now that you know, you must do? Correct. Do you know what the Sabbath day is? If you, love me, if you love me, obey my commands. My commandments. Give me James chapter 1, verse 22. So, so you know you're an Israelite. Mm -hmm. And you know that you're from the tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. To whom much is given? As much is received. Much, much is asked. Much is required. That's correct. Much That's is required, correct. my brother. That's correct. So there's a heavy, heavy job that you must fulfill. There's a calling that you must fulfill. Knowing that you are an Israelite from the tribe correct. of Judah. That's the tribe that Christ came from. That is correct. So some of the, some of the things that you're doing today shouldn't be done. Okay. For example, the Sabbath, right? Oh. No, no, hold on. James uh, now, chapter I, 1 I, verse I 22. But I'm going to give you a scripture where it is, 
even Yeshua, okay, when he was walking in the field, okay, and his and the disciples were hungry, okay, and, the, and, and, they, and they went out and eat, okay, that's the only thing I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get eat food. We going to take a couple times. Give me James chapter one verse twenty-two. Bring it out. Because there's a couple laws you ain't keeping. James chapter one verse twenty-two. Read it. James chapter one and verse twenty-two. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. So the scripture is saying that we are supposed to do the word and not just hear. Correct. If you know about the about if you know about this truth for eight years Correct. and you are not actually acting on it, you're not wearing your fringes, Correct. you're not keeping the Sabbath day, mm -hmm. you're you're not you're just hearing the word, you're not Correct. doing. Now it's time for you to actually do. Right. They say knowledge is power, right? That is correct. And ignorance is bliss, right? That's correct. But a wise man would never decide on would never go with ignorance. That's Why? Correct. Because when ignorance is decided you fall on, it's ugly. That's correct. But you know what's worse than ignorance, my brother? Yes, sir. Denial. Yes, sir. Why? Because denial is a combination of knowledge and ignorance. That's correct. And when reality sets in and Christ cracked this guy, you gotta look yourself in the mirror and say, I told you so. That's correct. So now it's time for you to start acting on that. You in denial right now, brother. You're not ignorant like a lot of our people out here. You know who you are. You know what tribe you're from. Now it's time to keep the laws. Give me Numbers chapter 15, verse 30. We're going to touch a couple, a couple laws that you got to start keeping, okay? Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Huh? You read, did you finish, James? I didn't finish. Oh, read it again. Read it again. Read that one more time. There's a, there's a part at the, at the very end of the 22. Deceiving your own selves. That's it. When, when you when you're just a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're deceiving What's yourself. James, what now? James chapter one verse twenty two. Why? Because you know the laws mm -hmm. and you hear it and you shake your head. Mm -hmm. But when it comes time to actually put your hands to the plow, you don't. And, you, and we a lot of people think that just knowing is going to get them into the kingdom of heaven. Ooh. Absolutely not. A lot of our people going to see Christ crack that sky and they're going to say, Oh snap. I told you so. Bring it out. You have to tell you have to tell that to yourself, brother. Correct. So you so don't don't deceive yourself just Correct. knowing and not doing, okay? Correct. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. So we're gonna go through some laws. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna see if you're gonna add here, okay? Mm -hmm. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Bring it out. Speak unto the children of Israel. We've established. You know you're a children of Israel, mm -hmm. read. And bid them that they make them fringes and the borders of their garments. So God commanded the Israelites to put what on the borders of their garments? Fringes. Fringes, right? Read on. Throughout their generations. So are we still generating today? That's correct. So we should still be wearing what? That is fringes. We still should be wearing fringes. Read on. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Correct. We put a border of blue on the fringes. Read on. Correct. And it shall be unto you for a fringe mm -hmm. that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So the point of the fringes is to remember all the commandments of God. But what, why did that happen? Why in that verse did God command us to wear fringes? What really happened a couple verses up? Give me that. Mm -hmm. The same thing that you brought up, brother. Read. Verse 32. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. So you out here on the Sabbath day, had you had your fringes on, you could look and say, it's the Sabbath. There was a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. He was doing his own business on the Sabbath day. Just like you are today, brother. He knew he was an Israelite. He knew a tribe he was from. And he was still just a hearer of the word and not a doer. Read on. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation and they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done to him so they understood that he was breaking the law he knew the law he didn't do it so what they do they put him inward read on and the Lord said unto Moses the man shall surely be put to death so that was the judgment for yes, breaking this, that's how heavy the Sabbath day is. Right, right, These right. churches ain't telling us that the Sabbath day is on Saturday. Right. You're not supposed to be buying, selling, shopping. That is a sin. Bring that sin was so serious, they had to put that man to death. Right. Right. But we have grace. 
God is giving you a dispensation of time to figure this out and get yourself right. That's right. You've been for the prophets of the Lord today, not by accident. Yes. Because now it's time for you to actually put your hand to the plow. Read what? it. And stoned him with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said, spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Now do you see why it's so important yes. to wear the fringes and to yes. keep the Sabbath? Right. Now having the fringes, I say, oh snap. It's, it's Saturday. It's a Sabbath day. I can't go to Walmart and go buy anything. Get me two. Numbers chapter 2, verse 33. Ezekiel 33, 32. Oh, Ezekiel 33, 32. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 32. Now you see how important it is to actually not just hear, but do, brother. So what's your name? I'm, I'm Gerald. Gerald. Okay, Gerald. Now it's time for, It's time for you to wake up. You're right. It's 8 a.m. That's too You're long, brother. Right. The times are short. You see what's going on in this right. world. You're right. Read that. Ezekiel 33 and 2. 33, 32. 33, 32. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 32. Bring it on. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice. And can play well on an instrument. God is saying that our people, they love to hear the Bible. Oh, I love Jesus. But when it comes time to actually do what the Bible says, oh, it's just a lovely song. I just like to hear it. It just sounds nice to my ears. Bring it up. But when it comes time to actually do what the Bible says, crickets. Read on. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Exactly. That's the problem with our people. They Listen, our people know they're the Israelites. Most of them have heard the, the movement. They know Christ is black, but when it comes to do the commandments, crickets. Read on. Verse 33, and when this coming to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. But when it's too late, like I said, what's worse than ignorance? Not doing it. Denial. Yeah. Because when Christ cracked that sky, you gotta look yourself in the mirror and say, I told you so. You're right. The prophets are before you today, and, they, and we telling you what it is. That's right. We tell you it's time for you to stop Correct. going to Walmart on the Sabbath, right. wear your fringes. Correct. Don't be that man that says, oh, damn, it's too late. Those right. men were the prophets before us. Right, right. Read that one more time. There's power in that scripture. Read that. Because that's going to be the reality of a lot of our people. Right. They see us out here marching, a thousand men marching in, in Atlanta, in, in Memphis. On every, every corner in America, there's thousands of us all over the all over the world today, right now, yes. doing the same thing in every city. Yes. And there's gonna be millions of people that are gonna say, "Damn, there was a prophet amongst us. Yes. Right. Those men were the, were the vessels of God, right. bringing out God's commandments." Right. Yes, sir. Now you gonna... Did you see that explosion that happened in Beirut? Yes. You see that explosion? Yes. What you think those people that got up that morning on their way to work? Did you think that they was going? No. No, that's how the that's how the sky is going to crack here. Right. A lot of our people are going to go to and fro in the earth, that's thinking right. it's okay, that's right. and it's going to be the last day that they ever remember. That's right. That's right. That's heavy. That is heavy. Because when it's too late, it's too late, and it's going to come like a it's going to come like a thief in the night. You ain't going to be right. expecting it. Get get me Romans chapter ten and verse one. Romans chapter ten verse one. Bring it out. Read. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel Is that they might be saved So God's prayer is that the Israelites might be saved And the children of Israel, God's chosen people, might be saved You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Americans You are the children of Israel You are God's chosen people Read on Brother Travis here, right? Brother Travis was saying that this country, he said something heavy, that this country was built on oppression, bloodshed, and slavery of the black Hispanic Native Americans. And I said, bro, did you know that was in the Bible? So he's here now trying to see if that's really in the Bible. You want to hear if that's in the Bible? Yeah. Give me that, Habakkuk 1. Yeah, Brother Travis. Habakkuk 1 and 8. That is in the Bible. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. So God says destruction. Woe means destruction unto him that buildeth a town with blood. Read on. Establish. And establish. A city by iniquity. This entire country was built on the blood of the blacks, 
Hispanics and Native Americans. Right. We built everything in this country. Right. From, from the Walmart to the White House That's right. to West End Station that was built on the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans' backs. That's right. Read, read that verse one more time. Woe to him that build a town with blood and establish a city by iniquity. So woe means destruction. Right. God is going to destroy those who built this town with blood. That's Why? Right. Because they built it on the blood of the children of Israel. Yes. You understand right. that, brother? And that's in the Bible? Yeah. That's in the Bible. I'm telling people that when they read the Bible, they don't read it through the right lens. They read it through the lens of God loves everyone. And he's going to come down and float down and levitate down with flowers and take everybody up into the sky. And we're going to live in a, in, in, in a, in a cloudy, soft heaven right like world that's not the that's not the god of this bible right. the god of this bible is about destruction right. and war the lord is a man of war right. and the lord is also a man of redeeming his own people right. 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 revelation chapter 13 verse 10 check this out read that it says the same thing later on he says the same thing read revelation chapter 13 and verse 10 Bring it out. he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. God says those who lead into captivity must go into captivity. Bring it out. Who led us into captivity? Bring it out. Mm. Don't be scared. White man. The white right. man. Thank you. Dude. The white man. Give me the sign, please. Soldier. Oh, yeah, that's all right. Hey, somebody give me the sign. Who led us into captivity? You know? This is common knowledge. These the people. This is stuff you should see in your textbooks. This is stuff you heard about in history class. It's, it's common knowledge. It only happened 400 years ago. That's right. Who lives in the captivity? The so-called white man. This Bible says what? Read again. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Right. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Read the next part. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. This is what we wait on. Right. This is what we want. We want redemption. The your pastor does not talk about this. He hide. These are the scriptures that he doesn't want to read. These are the uncomfortable topics in the Bible that he doesn't want to touch. The death, the destruction, the bloodshed, the redemption of the nation of, of the, the redemption of the nation of Israel. Your pastor don't want to talk about that. The Bible says that he that leadeth into captivity, he got to go into captivity. There's no way around that. What goes around comes around. You reap what you sow. Right. And he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. This is the faith and patience of the saints. Who are the saints? Do you know who the saints are? God's chosen people. God's chosen. And who are God's chosen people? I believe all of us, really. But it's Israel. It's Say, his uh, chosen people that he shed his blood with is Israel. Uh, right. Okay. So, so, so initially you said you think it's everyone, right? Uh, I think it's everyone by free choice. By, by that's the point that I want. Spiritual. By free, that's uh, not spiritual because the law is spiritual. Right. You understand that in the Bible, God says who His chosen people is, right? Right. Psalms 148 verse. Give me Psalms 148 verse 14. We're going to show you who His saints are because you said God's chosen people. Read. Psalms chapter 148 and verse 14. Bring it out. He also exalted the horn of His people. The praise of all his saints. So his is a possessive pronoun. Those are his shoes, right? They're not your shoes, right? Those are his, right? God has his own people. That's Read. Right. Even of the children of Israel. I right. said the children of Israel are his saints. Right. So when it says here is the commandment of God, the faith, uh, I'm sorry, here is the patience and faith of the saints. He's saying that this is the, pa the faith and patience of the nation of Israel. Why? Because if God led everybody, why would one nation why would one nation lead another nation in captivity? Bring it out. That would make no sense. Why would God save everybody? If he that leads in the captivity must go into captivity, that scripture wouldn't even be valid. It'd be obsolete. Right. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we go through the things that we go through? Bring it out. Because we broke God's commandments and God is judging us. That's the right. same way if your child would, 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 would go against what you said to do, you would discipline him. Here's the faith and patience of the saints. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. We have to shake that mindset. God did not come for everybody. That's if right. God came for every, if Christ came for everybody, and God loves everybody, we would all be equal. There is no such thing as equality. Stop waiting on it. Stop praying on it. It ain't happening. There will always be a head. There will always be a tail. Now you have to ask yourself: 
Are you tired of being a tail or do you want to be the head? Some people are complacent as hell. Our people, you know what the white man does? He oppresses us, he colonizes us, and he says you can have equality as long as I delegate when it's okay. Hell no. We call the shots. When Christ comes back, there will be no equality. It never will. That's right. Read. To will chapter 2 and verse 27. Read and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. Do you understand that, brother? So so who did God come for? Who's who is God's chosen people? I believe all of us believe. You believe. I believe. You believe. What does the Bible say? Uh, so the people are in Israel. Okay, so 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 do you believe in the Bible? Yeah, I do. Okay, that's a contradicting statement because I, I I just showed you two scriptures where it says that God came for the nation. I'll show you another one. Matthew's 15. I keep showing you scriptures where it says that God came for the nation of Israel. Those are His chosen people, and you keep saying I believe. So who are God's chosen people? I believe that just from there, like uh, the biblical standpoint, that it is in the chosen. From a biblical like, standpoint. Sorry. So what standpoint are you talking about? Uh, only from the word. Say that again. Uh, only from the word. Only from the word from what I know, from what I read. Only from. So I'm saying, what, what standpoint? You keep saying that God came for everybody's God's chosen people. So, so what? What is leading you to that, sister? Sister, real quick, I want to show you something. With the diapers, real quick. I, I just want to show you something real quick. I just want to finish my point. Because this is important information. This is the stuff that the churches ain't going to tell you. Check this out. So so the brother right here says that God came for everyone, right? And we're saying, well, we're not saying, the Bible's saying God came for the Israelites. Give me that scripture. Let God be true and every man alive. You know what's that? Romans 3. Read that real quick. So, ma'am, real quick, do you believe in God or do you believe in man? Believe in God. You believe in God, right? So if God says it, are you going to take God's word for it or are you going to take man's word for it? I'm not taking no man word for it. All right. <laughs> so we're going to see what God says. Read that. Romans 3. Verse 2. Romans chapter 3 and verse 3. You know? Oh, what if some did not believe? So what if some did not believe what God said in the Bible? Some people hear the Bible and say, oh, that's not true. It don't mean that. Read Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief make what God says obsolete? God forbid! God is saying, of course not. Read. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. So the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. So now get me Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. Read. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said. So ma'am, are you listening? So, 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 okay, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna so you listening? So it says, read that again. My brother right there with a the no new friend shirt. I want you to hear this. I want all y'all to listen to this. Who did Christ come for? Who do y'all think Christ came for? And who are his people? Teacher. Thank you. Ma'am, who do you think? Ma'am on the phone. Sister, sister, sister on the phone. Who do you think God came for? Christ came for. Keep saying God. Who do you think Christ came for? You don't know. Okay, that's an honest answer. You? I already heard the answer. <laughs> hey, what's the answer? Israel. Israel. That's right. That's right. It, see that, and, and brother, that's that's the point that I'm making. Is that it's simple to adhere to God. She, the answer is right here in the Bible. When you put your own mind to it, you destroy it. You, you destroy the complete understanding of the Bible. That's the problem with our people is that we like to love God the way we want to love God instead of the way God says to love God. Right. Right. Read that again. No. Read that. Matthew 15, 24. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 24. Bring it on. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is Christ speaking in the New Testament. Christ said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. Christ died for the Israelites. That's right. right. Christ died for the Israelites. The Bible was written to the Israelites by the Israelites right. for the Israelites. That's right. So when we say God loves the entire world, that's not biblical. No. That is not biblical. And in context, when it does use that, give me the definition of world. Isaiah 45, 17. Bring it out. The only world God loves is the, is the, is the world of the nation of Israel. Right. Our people, we got to stop putting our own twist on what God says. Right. We'll let God be true and every man a liar. You understand that, brother? So who's God's chosen people? <laughs> the Israelite. Thank you. One more time. The Israelite. The Israelite. Get a brother That's in hand. Right. That, 
That is adherence to God's word. That is what God... Be, 10 and verse 1. That's what God wants to see. That's what God wants to see adherence to his words. When you hear the Bible and it comes out and it says it there, all you got to say is what the Bible says. I'm, notice this, brother. I'm not going off with my own mouth, right? I'm going straight to Scripture. That's all we've been doing this entire time. Going right back to the Bible and proving and substantiating every point we make with the Bible. These ain't my own words. These are God's words. Right. Romans Rule. 10 and 1. Yeah. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Rule. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. So once again, God is saying his prayer is for who? Israelites. For who? Israelites. For who, ma'am, in the back? Sister in the back? Israelites. Who? Israel. Once again, God is praying for Israel. Read. That they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So y'all all standing before us today because y'all believe in God, right? We all have a zeal of God. Oh, I love Jesus. The church is doing all the time. Pastor T.D. Jakes. Crap dollar. Lord, I love Jesus, right? But what? Read on. But not according to knowledge. They love God, but not according to knowledge. Not according to the knowledge of the Bible. Read. For they being ignorant. So that's what it is. They being ignorant, not knowing. Read. Of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So that's, that's why I kept asking you the same question. Who are God's chosen people? Because we want to go about to establish our own righteousness, but with our people, they don't want to submit to the righteousness of God. Right. It, it says the ones that are ignorant. You're not ignorant. You know, you have some sort of understanding that God came for the Israelites. But what happens is we want to put our own spin on the Bible. We have to shake what we think we know. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 14, verse 34. That's my last scripture and I'm off. So, uh, we have to shake what we know and come back to what God wants us to come back to. Right. His Bible. Second Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. Read Bring it up. Second Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. Bring it up. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. God wants us to subdue our own understanding. He wants us to suppress what we think we know. Read. And reform your hearts. And repent. Come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. Identify the Israelite. Read. Ye shall be kept alive. That's, That's right. what's going to keep us alive. Christianity ain't telling you that. Islam ain't telling you that. Egyptology ain't telling you that. The Israelites are telling you that. Ooh, you got to subdue your own understanding and do what the Bible says. That's, That's right. right. Read on. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. So if you want to obtain the kingdom of heaven, when destruction comes, you have to subdue your own understanding. And that's what you just did. You got to do it more now. Yes. You got to start keeping God's commandments. You got to start wearing fringes. I got to start reading the Bible more. Early. Start reading the Bible. That's what's going to help grow your understanding. Right. The only reason why we understand this Bible the way we do is because we practice what we preach. Right. Scripture said, good understanding have all they that do his commandments. All right. So now it's time for you to do his commandments. You understand, brother? Yeah. All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.